Born in 1911 in Blackfoot, Idaho, Andy Peterson moved with his family to McMinnville while in grade school. In high school, Andy was an excellent four-sport athlete playing quarterback in football, center in basketball, pitcher in baseball, and he even made the golf team. He was a natural all-around athlete who could quickly pick up any sport he tried, such as golf or tennis, and he even bowled a perfect 300 game on one occasion. He probably was one of Mac High's greatest all-around athletes. Wasn't anything that he wasn't good at. I remember one time even uh, once those guys were playing pool one day, and Andy had never even played pool. He picked up a cue stick and he beat us all. Just a natural, he, every, all his coordination and everything. He was a great athlete. But baseball would prove to be Andy's best sport. He was a talented pitcher with an excellent fastball who occasionally filled in as an outfielder. He quickly developed into an outstanding hitter as well. After graduating as the valedictorian of his class at McMinnville High School in 1929, Andy set off to study law at Willamette University in Salem while playing both basketball and baseball. He would go on to have one of the best collegiate baseball careers of his time, with perhaps his biggest personal achievement coming during his first season when he pitched a perfect game with 14 strikeouts. This was the first perfect game pitched at any level of the sport in five years. He was the team's best pitcher and hitter and one of the most heavily recruited pitchers in the country. Andy received a very attractive offer from the Detroit Tigers following his sophomore season, but chose to turn it down to finish his education. Andy's great play continued over the next two years, achieving two more perfect games, a conference championship, and a tour of Japan and Manchuria with the University of Hawaii's traveling squad. As the best pitcher on the team, Andy was often called upon to pitch two or three consecutive games. He also led the team in hitting with a career average of 555. After graduating as the class president of Willamette in 1933, Andy received professional baseball offers from the Detroit Tigers, Chicago Cubs, Cleveland Indians, and St. Louis Cardinals before signing with the New York Yankees. Despite a successful training camp pitching against future Hall of Famers Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, the powerhouse Yankees decided to move Andy to their minor league affiliate in Newark, New Jersey. It was only a matter of time before he would be called up, but Andy was getting homesick and after a few months decided to leave the Yankees. After a tryout with the California Angels, Andy eventually signed with the Portland Beavers in January of 1934. Andy was an immediate contributor to the AAA ball club, but spent only one full season with the team due to nagging arm injuries. In 1935, Andy left baseball to pursue his business endeavors and marry his high school sweetheart, Irene Kaufman. He started Andy's Texaco, which was a full service station on the corner of 3rd Street and Galloway in downtown McMinnville. He was a great employer. Um, as he owned Andy's Texaco downtown, and I worked there for them, um, Whatever hours you could work, he would work around your schedule as far as school was concerned. It was a place where a lot of uh, people, particularly teachers, bought gas and uh, because of Andy and um, how he did the service and, and uh, was always friendly. I would say that at that in that period of time, his business was probably one of the top uh, service stations in the community. On January 9th, 1938, Andy and Irene had their first child, Diane followed by their second Larry in 1940. It didn't take long for people to see that the Peterson children had inherited their father's athleticism and competitiveness. Andy started teaching the sport of tennis to his daughter Diane at a very young age. I lived a, a, a block from that family and uh, in, the, in the 50s, and I'd see Diane and Andy over there at the tennis courts just hour after hour hitting tennis balls. Andy hitting tennis balls, Diane, Diane slamming them back. And it was part of the, you know, it kind of got me playing tennis, just watching them, uh, watching them play. By the time she was 12, Diane had become the number one ranked 18 and under female tennis player in the state of Oregon. She was a fierce competitor in the West Coast amateur circuit who didn't like to lose to anyone, even her own brother. And I can remember her brother Larry and I, uh, we would get out on the tennis courts and we would, two of us would stand her. So it'd be two on one and she'd still whip us. And I know that Larry, I don't know if he's ever said anything, but he, he claims that finally, after years and years, he got her down in California and he beat her one time in tennis because they were both very competitive. I do know that uh, I told Larry, I said, now when I talked to Diane about that, I just said it was a different story than what you had told me. Diane's success in tennis continued into high school where she went undefeated as a freshman on her way to the first of three straight state championships. Her amazing 50-match win streak led the Oregonian newspaper to label her Oregon's Net Queen. By now, Diane had become the number one ranked under-18 female tennis player for a region that spanned all of Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Southwest Canada. She achieved all this despite having mild asthma. 
but tennis was not the only activity that Diane participated in. She also played two years of varsity basketball while being involved in several other extracurricular activities like managing the girls' swim team and being a member of the rally squad. Diane's involvement in a wide variety of activities was a common trait of the Peterson family instilled upon them by their father's example. Andy, while successfully running a number of businesses including the Texaco Station, a walnut processing plant, and newly acquired tree farm, still found time to be an active member of the Elks Lodge, compete in city league sports, and contribute as a volunteer firefighter. He was probably the first uh, person in Yamhill County to raise Christmas trees and then have you come out and bring your family and, and cut the Christmas trees. That was the big thing, to go up to the Larry Ann tree farm and go out and cut a Christmas tree and uh, drag it into um, the receiving shed there because they always had chocolate. My kids, hot chocolate, my kids just loved to go up there every year. And Andy was, and the family was so great that uh, it was the big Christmas outing. After graduating from Mack High as an honor student in 1956, Diane enrolled at Oregon State University where she pursued a degree in education. At that time, OSU did not have a women's tennis program, thus ending Diane's illustrious career. As Diane's athletic career was coming to a close, her younger brother Larry's was just beginning to flourish. Like his dad, Larry was a versatile four-sport athlete despite suffering a terrible skiing accident in the eighth grade, which resulted in a severely broken leg. After recovering from his injury, Larry went on to claim a Riverwood Junior Golf Championship while excelling in football, basketball, baseball, and a number of extracurricular activities at Mack High. In football, he was a very good halfback for Don Maybe, whose teams advanced as far as the semifinals in the state playoffs. Larry was also an all-league basketball player, but he truly excelled as an outstanding center fielder and hitter in baseball. Larry was a talented switch hitter who once hit two home runs, one from each side of the plate, in the same game. Larry led the team in batting while helping the Grizzlies achieve two league championships. After graduating from high school in 1958, Larry attended Clark Junior College for one year where he played basketball and baseball. As a sophomore, he transferred to Oregon State University to pursue a degree in finance, and in his first season with the Beavers, Larry made an immediate impact on the baseball team. He batted a Northern Division best 419 with 19 RBIs on his way to all division, all district, and all American honors. Larry played three seasons of varsity baseball for OSU as a hitter and outfielder and helped the Beavers compile a record of 71 and 25 during this time. In his senior season, Larry won the team's most valuable player award while leading Oregon State to the NCAA West Regionals and the number 13 ranking in the final national poll. After the 1962 season was over, Larry's impressive athletic career came to an end. After earning his master's degree in finance, Larry moved to California to work as a broker and eventually started his own investment advisory firm. In 1965, Andy earned one more athletic achievement. The three-time all-conference pitcher was inducted into the NAIA Hall of Fame for his incredible collegiate career. In addition to that, Andy was now a Michael Book Club champion in golf, which was another sport he enjoyed playing with his daughter. Diane, who is now a graduate of Oregon State with a degree in education, was teaching homeroom classes at Newburgh Middle School, but continued to live in McMinnville because she loved it so much there. Kids could uh, develop a relationship with her because she cared. And uh, she cared more than just having a kid as a student. She was an outstanding teacher. And a lot of the kids in, in Newburgh remember Diane Peterson. As a member of Michael Book Country Club, she would go on to win 14 straight women's club championships from 1964 through 1978. She was dominating golf in McMinnville like she had dominated tennis in the Northwest. On May 26, 1984, Andy Peterson died from natural causes at the age of 73. He was one of McMinnville's first sports heroes and most successful businessmen, with all three of his businesses lasting almost 30 years. He was a member of the Elks Lodge for 50 years and a man who involved himself deeply into the community in many different ways. More than any other Peterson endeavor, the Larry Ann Tree Farm held a special value to Diane and Larry. They both inherited half of the property and decided to keep it as a family-run business for many years to come. In 2006, another Peterson was inducted into a Hall of Fame. This time it was Larry who was being honored by Oregon State University for his All-American baseball career. It was an honor that came not a moment too soon, as his big sister's health was in question. Just two days after attending that ceremony, Diane passed away from natural causes at the age of 68. The Peterson family achieved countless accomplishments between them. Though their sports achievements will forever remain in record books, athletics alone is not what the people of McMinnville remember them for.
and Andy was always a tremendous individual and gentleman. You always felt good around him. He came to probably all of the athletic contests that uh, I participated in along with his son, and you could always hear him in the, in the bleachers yelling encouragement to you. Never heard him ever say a negative word uh, to you as an individual or to you as you were trying to improve your athletic skills. A very giving person. And before she passed away, she was always helping her neighbors and she was a great little gal. He was a kind of student and kind of person that you would uh, want to have and, and want to be a friend with and, and so forth because he was just an all around uh, good person growing up and continues to be. I have nothing but the fondest memories of the, of the Peterson family because uh, they set the general trend and direction that good families ought to look at and go. And I think that one of the things, one of the really outstanding things about Larry and Diane is that that type of personality and that type of uh, competitiveness rubbed off on other kids around them because you saw how competitive they were and what fine, upstanding individuals they were. And consequently, you thought to yourself, you know, I'd like to be like that. And so I know a lot of kids, including myself, probably looked at them as role models in many ways.